show message dialogue, but more often it's got to be it's got to be the class followed by a dot followed by the uh, name of the method in that class. It just disambiguates it because you could have show message dialogue in multiple classes. So you say which class provides the method you want to call, and then in parentheses you have expressions separated by commas. Now, when Java sees something like this, what does it do? What is the thing that it does? What are you asking it to do? Yes? Well, let's get back. What does it do with the expressions? Yeah. Say again. No, it does not plug the expressions into the method. It does something to them. What does Java do with those expressions? Before it even gets around to the method. Yeah? Assign them to variables? Nope, it doesn't assign them to variables yet. What does it do? Yeah? Uh, evaluates the expression. It evaluates the expression. That's the only thing it can do. Expressions are evaluated. So it evaluates the variables. I'm sorry, evaluates the expressions. And let's say there were, uh, like up there, let's the, call the show message dialog. There's one expression. So it evaluates it and it gets the string. The answer is 10, let's say. So it evaluates that expression to get that string. Then it gives that string to the method. It doesn't give the expression to the method. It gives the string, it gives the value of the expression to the method. And then the method takes in those inputs and does its thing. And we'll look at expressions in more detail today. But what happens when you, in that first example, what is it that happens? Remember, something happens when you evaluate a statement. What happens when you evaluate that statement? Don't be afraid, it's not a hard question. Yeah. Right, hello is printed to the console. And what happens when the second method is evaluated? Yes. Right, the dialogue pops up with the string in it, showing what the value is. Um, yeah. Well, he's asking a question about uh, sort of an advanced question about methods. Let's wait till we look at simple examples before we ask a question like that. Yeah? Uh, in Zyblix, um, a lot of the methods weren't formatted with periods like these. Um, what, what are the naming conventions for that? Well, when did you do the Zyblix? Uh, yesterday. Okay. Um, Again. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk, okay. We'll talk. The reason I ask is there are two kinds of methods, static ones and non-static ones. And for a little bit last week, the wrong version of the sections we're in, they were talking about non-static methods. We're going to talk about static methods today, and I think it will answer both your questions. So, suppose we put, uh, our method was not uh, system.printline hello, that wasn't our method call. Suppose it was math.square root of 7. What would that statement do? He said it would return the value, but no. Well, yes, it would cause the square root of 7 to be computed. And then that number would be thrown away. So it doesn't make sense. It, would it make sense to have a statement that was just 2 plus 2 semicolon? You're adding 2 and 2, but what, you're not doing anything with the answer. And so the statement doesn't do anything in that case. It just creates an, a number that gets thrown away. Same thing with the method call. The only method calls that make sense to use as statements are ones that have some side effect, like printing or displaying. Yeah? Would 2 plus 2 semicolon compile? Two, no, 2 plus 2 semicolon wouldn't compile because a compiler can tell that there's no side effect. Okay, so this, we're going to look at lots of examples of this today. Because you also use method calls in expressions. There you care about the value. When you use a method call as a statement, you just care about the side effect. Um, let me show you some examples of statements. What kind of example, what kind of statement is that? We've looked at three. We've got declarations, assignments, and method calls. Yes? That's an assignment, declaring a variable called height. What's that? 
Not an assignment. How do you know it's not an assignment? Yeah? Because it says what type it is. Right, it starts with a declaration. It's declaring a variable weight and initializing it. So that's a, that's a declaration. What's that? Declaration or assignment? It's a declaration. It starts with a type. If it says type name, variable name equals, it's a declaration. If it just says variable name equals, it's an assignment. The difference is important. Yeah? I have a question. In the first uh, example, you said an assignment. How is that an assignment? Did I say it was an assignment? That's why you're all saying assignment. Okay, let me back up. All three are declarations. Sorry. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. So we've got three declarations. Another declaration, right? Another declaration. Kind of boring. Another declaration. Another declaration. Something different, finally. What's that? That's a method call, and it has the side effect of displaying something to the user. That's why we're making a method call. Okay, so those are all examples of statements. And in fact, these are statements that solve a particular problem. So let's look at the problem. Here we see those same eight statements, but they're packed inside of a method. And remember, what happens, first of all, what's the importance of declaring the method that particular way, public, static, void, main, string, square brackets, args. Yeah? That method is automatically activated as soon as the program starts up. Okay. So a program has to start somewhere, and where a Java program starts is with a main method. When you run a Java program, what you're actually doing is running a class. And so if you ran this class, it would run that method for us. Yeah? Okay, so what's highlighted in blue right now, for right now, you just got to suspend disbelief or questioning and just uh, type that without thinking if you want to main that. Just think that's how you spell main. And we'll talk about, about the other stuff later. All right now, it's just one of those things about Java. Uh, it's a mouthful. There's actually a website called publicstaticvoidmain.com where you get questions answered about Java. And if you pick in the right place when you create a class, you can get it to create, declare the main method for you. But anyway, we won't worry about that. But notice we have a square, we have braces here, and inside the braces we have our eight statements. So that's the scope. These declarations all occur inside those braces, and so the variables we're declaring are visible in that blue area. So what does, when the method is called, what does Java do about it? What does Java do with a method, with a method that consists of eight statements like that? Yes? Executes them in sequence. Executes them in sequence, one after the other until it gets to the end. And then the program is over because that was the main method that just ended. So it, it's going to display an input dialog to get a height in inches. It's going to display an input dialog to get a weight in pounds. It's going to convert the height into a, from a string form into a number. Same thing for the weight. It's going to convert uh, to meters and, and uh, kilograms. It's going to compute the BMI, body mass index, and it's going to show the body mass index. So those are eight steps that we're using to, to run the program. Now, would it matter if we rearrange the statements? Got some votes for yes. Actually, it's more more nuanced than that. Is there a way to rearrange these statements such that the program does the same thing as far as the user is concerned? Yes. Yeah. We could take these two statements and change their order. It doesn't matter whether you convert to meters first or to kilograms first. But if we took this statement here and put it before those two. Java complains. Now, we can see what it's complaining about, but what is it it's complaining about? Yeah? The uh, variables, uh, kilos and meters haven't been converted yet. Right. We're trying to make use of kilos and meters before 
they've been declared. Order matters in that case. And if we look and see what Java has in mind here, we hover the mouse over the red line and it says kilos cannot be resolved to a variable. So it can't look ahead for the variable declaration. It only wants to look back inside the method. It doesn't find it, so it's complaining. So the order matters. Okay? Well, who knows what parse double does? It says integer.parse double. Notice we're calling, uh, how many method calls are there inside of main? How many places do you see method calls? I see five. And in each case, it's the name of the class, it's a dot, and then the name of the method we want to call. So we want to call the show input dialog from dialogs. We want to call parse double from the double class. And so on. What does parse double do? All the way in the back. All right. It does something that's really not very interesting to you. It takes the string that the user entered and converts it to a double, or at least tries to. It may not be a, a numeric string that was entered. Now, if you don't remember that, you can just hover the mouse over it, and you see returns a new double initialized to the value represented by the specified string. This is called, uh, this is one example of what's called IntelliSense. So you can hover the mouse over methods and see, ah, that says brings up a dialog that prompts the user for input. And if you can't remember a method name, but you manage to remember the class it's in, you can say dialogs dot. I should, okay, it took a while. I typed control space to make it do it. Often it just pops it up anyway. And it shows me, it suggests what I, what I can type next. Show input dialog, show message dialog. So I make a lot of use of IntelliSense. And you should too. You don't remember how to spell show into dialog? We'll just double click there and it'll stick it in for you and remind you to put a prompt right there. Good stuff. Okay? So there's a main method. Yeah? So if you want to take a string and turn it into an integer, it turns out there's a method called integer.parseInt. Well, parseInt, I think it's called. And since I can't remember, I would just type integer dot and see. Yeah? Uh, where is double parse double defined? It's, okay, dub, the double class comes with Java. Double class comes with Java. Yeah. Now, typically when you use a class in a program, you need to import it up above. So you see up here, I imported cs14lib.dialogs, but I did not import the double class. The double class is called, I just happen to know this, java.lang.double. Okay? It just turns out that there's, the, the classes in java.lang.double are so useful and are used in so many programs that it's automatically imported, so you don't have to do it explicitly. Any other class you want to use, you need to import up there. Say which, which, which one you're using. There are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of classes in the Java library. We'll use a tiny fraction. But you'll, you know, you'll learn about some useful ones. Yeah? How come some of them are automatically imported, but not all of them? All the ones in java.lang are automatically imported. But like, how come all the java.whatever are not imported? The reason they're all not imported is they're just too many. It would just, it would make... Uh, there would be all there be you know, naming conflicts because there'd be classes with the same name in two different places and the sort of compromise. Okay, now the thing is though, if you let's say you forgot, in fact, I don't usually type an import statement. Instead, I just use dialogs, and it's complaining now because it doesn't know which dialog class you mean. But if you hover the mouse, it will say, ah. Here's some suggestions. The first one says, import dialogs from CS14lib. So I just click that, and it shows up again. So you can get Eclipse to write part of your code for you. You have to be a little bit careful, because it may be the class you're using exists in a diff couple different places. You've got to make sure you're picking the right one. So don't just click at the first solution. Um, it may not have a good solution, but you know, make sure you're clicking the right one. Okay, now. Let's suppose we're in the business of selling useful um, 
useful static methods. And this is, this is one of our best sellers. We, we sell this thing. But our customers start saying, you know, this is a nice method, this main method. But it's a little too constraining because we, we've got no choice when we use this method. It's going to ask for the input from an input dialog. And it's going to display it in a message dialog. And I would rather have it take the input from the keyboard and display the answer to the console. Or I'd rather take the input from a little box in a bigger graphical user interface. So, what, but, so they want to separate how the information gets uh, from the user from how we calculate the body mass index. So how can we change things here so that we've got sort of a more reusable piece of code that can be used in more contexts? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. You have to create a method for the decoding. Okay. So we said we need to create a method. So the idea is when you write programs, most of your time is going to be spent creating uh, methods and classes, helpers. You're creating parts. So programs are built out of parts, and before you make the program, you've got to build the parts. So we might decide, you know, I would really like a method. I really wish, you say to yourself, I really wish that there were a method that would take inches and pounds as input and produced body mass index as a result. And I call this principle of wishful thinking. You, you decide, you know, my life would really be easier if the Java library had a method called BMI, takes two doubles as parameters and returns a double as its result. And then we just call the method. And we can call it from different contexts. Okay? Now, when you wish for something in the Java library, sometimes your wish comes true immediately. You find out, ah, it's already in the library. I wish there were a method to compute square roots. I wish there were a method to do exponentiation. I wish there were a method to convert uh, strings into doubles. In each case, your wish comes true. That part is in the library. But alas, there is no BMI calculation method in the Java library. Now, why is it? It's not a hard method. Are the folks who wrote Java just that short-sighted that they left the BMI method out? How could they do such a thing? What's going on? Yeah? It's not very useful to the majority of programmers. Right. He said it's not very useful to the majority of programmers. Lots of, there are lots of things you could imagine in the library. You can't put everything under the sun, so you try to put things that are as generally useful as possible. So we're going to have to create that part ourselves. So let me show you how to do that. First thing we have to do is pick a name for our method. Well, I'm going to call it BMI. We have to decide what it's going to take as parameters and what it's going to produce as a result. So what type of thing is it going to give back? When we calculate the BMI, well, first of all, what are we given? What are we operating on to compute the BMI? Two doubles. Two doubles. Let's say we've given the height in inches, uh, let's say the height in inches and the weight in pounds come in. And then as a result, we're going to give back the BMI, which is a double itself. So what we do is we do it this way. A type name goes right before the method name, and that's the type of thing the method returns. So it's kind of backwards. So this says BMI will produce a double as a result. And then in parentheses after it, you say, what does it take when you call it? What do you have to pass it? Okay. So this says BMI is a method that takes in two doubles as input and produces a double as a result. Now, in front of it all, you've got to say public static just because. There's no point in explaining what public and static mean until we get to methods that are neither, either not public or not static. Once there's a distinction, once I can compare it to something else, we can talk about it. But for now, you just say, okay, I'll put public static in front just because that's what Joe said to do. Then, you put a pair of braces, and inside the braces come the statements to do the calculation. And right now, I don't know exactly what statements to use, but uh, it's apparent that Java is not happy here. What's it not happy about, do you think? Yeah? You're missing a second 
No, I'm not missing a semicolon. Semicolon, then you don't put a semicolon at the end of every line, just at the end of some statements. Yeah? There's no return statement. Yeah, he's saying there's no return statement. So, you know, he's programmed a bit before. But basically, that's what it's saying. The method must return a result of type double. We've got to write code that ends in it returning the answer. And so, what you can do to at least calm down Java so you can uh, calm down Eclipse so you can make some progress is just stick. That's a return. That, that's the statement that says uh, end the method and return zero as the answer. So, if you call this method, no matter what you give it as input, it's going to return zero as the answer. Yeah? Um, the, when you're saying giving the name of the method, the, the type of the method, that's only what's coming out of the method. It's not what's going into it, right? Because I see you have double, double in the method. That's that's not what the double BMI means. Right. right. No, BMI is the name of the method. Uh -huh. Double is what's returned. That's just the return. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with what goes in. This is what goes in. Okay. Yeah. Is it necessary to write the double, or do you see that? It's necessary to write the double. write a method that takes a string and a double or a string and a char or whatever. But only one type of thing can come out. Only one out. Okay. There we have our BMI. Now, suppose BMI, we implemented it correctly. How can we use it in this main method to simplify our life? I think we can get rid of that stuff. How can we change this method just by changing? Right now it's completely because BMI isn't declared. How can we arrange for uh, this to work just by modifying the show message dialog right here? Yeah? Just do the BMI and then give it inches and pounds, inches, comma, pounds? Yeah. So let's see what we're doing. We are interacting with the user, converting their input into numbers. Then we're calling the BMI method and giving it some number of inches and some number of pounds, and it's producing as a result the value of that BMI expression right there, that method call, is going to be the body mass index, the double that needs to be printed out. So we, we append the double that's returned to BMI is, and it's displayed. And now we can use this BMI method all over the place. From other from other 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 mains or other programs, so it's reusable now. Yeah, is it s still considered good style to have a method call inside of a method call? Or no. is that yeah, yeah, method call inside of a method call is perfectly normal, perfectly okay. usual. I mean, if it if it bugs you a little bit, you could do something like this. Yeah. You could replace this with a variable, and then you could say. But that's never so necessary. No, equals BMI of inches and pounds. But I just wanted to show you something a little bit different. So what would happen if I ran this program now? I run it, I enter a height in inches, uh, weight in pounds, and I get back zero as my answer. Because that's what the, that's the only thing, that, that's all the method is capable of doing, is returning zero as its answer. So, yeah. He's saying, is it okay? You notice I'm calling BMI, but it's not declared until later. With method declarations, that's okay. What's also missing you might have expected to see in front of the BMI? Yeah, the class name. Why didn't I have to write static demo dot BMI? Because BMI is declared in a class called static demo. Yeah. Yeah, if you're inside a class, you don't have to import it into yourself. You can automatically use it without qualification. That's just a nice shortcut that we got. Okay, what's he going to take to complete this method so it returns the right thing? We've got to do some calculation inside of the BMI method using the height and the weight. 
And fortunately, I, I copied these statements right out of a right out of the method above. They don't quite work, but at least it's a start. So what's wrong here? It says meters gets inches times that conversion factor. Why is inches underlined? Yeah? Because it doesn't exist in that method. It's not declared in the method. It's declared in the main method, but we can't see it there. We're restricted. Uh, it, it, you can't look at another method for a variable. So what should we call this thing besides inches? We want this to be the height in inches. Where do we get the value of inches? It's right there. Now we can decide. Do you want to call this inches or that? Let's just do it this way. They have to match up. So when the method is called up above, BMI inches and pounds, whatever number inches has is stored in the height. Whatever, whatever number pounds contains is stored in the weight, and then we execute the method. So the information comes, the, the initial values of height and weight come from right here. Okay? Why is Eclipse still complaining? Yeah? Return statement. Right. We have to return a double. We have to, at, the, at our last thing we have to do is tell it what is the answer. And the way you do that is with the return statement, which is very simple. It's return followed by an expression. So what is an expression which is the thing we want to return as our answer? Okay. So we have directions for computing the BMI and then we return it as our answer. Now if I were writing this program, I probably would take a shortcut and I'd do something like this. That just says return the result of dividing kilos by meters times meters. Okay. Now it actually works, yeah. If you were to have declared the MI as a variable there, would you be able to use it on the program? Any variable, okay, ask about if we declared BMI there. No, and, and the answer is meters, kilos, or BMI if we declared it in here, cannot be used outside of the method. They're called local variables. They're not for use anywhere else in the program. They just make sense only inside of BMI. So BMI to the outside user is a black box. You feed in two doubles, you get out the, the body mass index. So if we run this one and put in 72 and the 160 pounds that I was when I was 18, and we get 21.7 roughly as BMI, which is a good one. So now we got it working right. Yeah? Um, in the BMI method, height and weight aren't declared. Uh, except I, why is it working? Okay, he said in the BMI method, height and weight aren't declared. Are declared? But I disagree. Are they declared in the little Right, they're not local variables. They're, they're called formal parameters. They're the parameters to the method. So they're declared in the parentheses up there. Okay. Now, when you declare meters, it's easy to see where the initial value of meters come from. And when you declare kilos, you can see what its initial value is. Where does the initial value of height come from? So how does height get a value? Yeah? No, from right here. So whenever you call BMI, you're giving two expressions. And the first expression's value is used to initialize height, and the second one is used to initialize weight. And then the method runs. Yeah? What kind of thing? Start with your question. What kind of thing uh, can you talk me about to return? I mean, uh, at first, you just have to return zero, and it just shows zero point zero uh, on the top So, it's okay. just a change. So okay, so what he observed is originally, even though I was supposed to return a double, I returned an int, namely zero. And the short answer is, if, if Java wants a double and you give it an int, it doesn't care. It just converts it to a double. Because an int will always convert to a double. It won't do the opposite direction. Because if a double is 3.5, there's no good way to convert it to an int. And your question? Um, where does this um, dialogues type come from? Because it's not working on my mind. Okay, so she's asking, sense? where is the dialogues class coming from? It comes from the CS1410 library, which I have right here in my project. So if you create an empty Java project in Eclipse, you won't have that library. 
Yeah, I, I was having a hard time figuring out how to create one that was in, in 1410. Okay, if you want to have a class, if you want it to start out with the CS1410 library, you use the CPM. Create a new Canvas project for 2018-1410, and you pick a blank project, and it'll, you'll get a blank project that contains two things. It contains the formatting standards I want you to follow, and it contains the, the library. You just create it using Clips' uh, method of creating a new job project. You won't have the library. Yeah? Okay, I didn't catch the last thing. Okay, so this line is a dialogue that show message dialogue that line. Yeah. That another way to write system that out that line. No. This does something different from system that out that line. Repeat. Okay. He's asking, is dialogues dialogues dot show message dialogue the same as uh, system that out dot print line? System that out dot print line can print to the console, which is right down here in Eclipse. Prints to your screen. This thing brings up a dialogue box and displays it. Yeah? What's the easiest way to have multiple lines in one dialogue box? Well, let's say you wanted to have backslash in is called the new line character. So if I run the program this way, it says hide in inches because I told it to put a new line in. And, of course, my program isn't very friendly, and you really can't cancel out of it, even though I just did. Okay, now, we're not done yet. There's something really, really, really crucial that we've left out. I'll let you wonder about what that is for the next few minutes while we take a break. Um, okay, just a quick break, but I have a question. Okay. What do I do to deal work this time? Okay. Camera broke. Either something got changed with the camera broke. What I'm pissed off about is that I didn't catch it sooner. I just happened to go to the screen and somebody made a message. Does anyone else have no audio? So usually I check that audio right away. But since it's worked all the time and I haven't had any issues with the audio, I stop checking it. Yeah. As soon as you stop checking it is when it goes out. We have another backup camera, and we have, might have to bring up the other camera. If I don't figure out what's wrong with it, we might have to bring up another camera. Is it still not recording audio? It's still not recording audio. I'm recording from uh, the laptop. Okay. So, I tried to record from his computer, and... No, I tried to record a different input. There's different things. Everything has a mic. But I tried this one, and it sounds a little echoey in the background. And I tried a different one and it started squeaking and squealing and I had to turn that off. If you go back and listen to the, you'll hear it. And I had to turn that off because that was annoying. So I went back to this one. It's a little shallow and echoey. 